When Henry Hudson came up the Hudson River in 1609, 400 years ago, he and his crew commented on the rich abundance of fish life that was in the Hudson River at that time. And it's wonderful to think about how the Native Americans who lived here on Mejia Kentuck, the river that flows both ways, relied on these fish for food, this seasonal abundance, especially in the springtime. Shad would come up the river, striped bass, sturgeon, many different species that we're going to actually take a look at today. In addition to this great diversity of species, there's also a wonderful diversity of adaptations, of sizes, of shapes, of ways of living that we find in fish. We're going to be taking a look at lots of different adaptations today, but let's start with size. Let's look at some of the smallest and some of the biggest fish we can find in the Hudson River estuary. To help us out, my good friend Brittany. Hey Brittany, how's it going? Yes. How are you? I'm a little wet right now oh, but, and muddy, right. but I hope you're okay yeah. with that. Okay. Yeah, that's fine. What, uh, what do you got for us here? I actually have a very, very small fish. This is called a tessellated darter. Interesting. And this, this fish is actually full grown. They only get to be about two inches big. And they get their name because as you can see as he moves, he darts kind of around. So he's yeah. really low in the water. Now, so how big is this going to get when it's full grown? This is it. This is basically about two inches. That's oh, okay. as big as they get. So these are pretty small fish, these but they're pretty, meant to be. Yes, they are meant to be. Now, we also have some very big fish yeah. that live in the Hudson River that I'd like to talk to you about. All right, what have you got? Well, I'd like to talk to you for a moment about the Atlantic sturgeon. The Atlantic sturgeon can actually be found, if you look right out here, past Asopus Island, they actually can be found right here in Nori Cove. Now, I have two students from Haviland Middle School here, and they're going to show you just how big a sturgeon can get. Now, this may not seem very big, but this is actually, they can get to be over 10 feet long, which is extremely large. And what, one cool, really cool thing about Atlantic sturgeon is actually they are called anadromous, which means that they are born here in freshwater, but they live most of their life out in saltwater. And once they reach sexual maturity, about 12 to 18 years old, they'll actually come back here every two to three years and reproduce and spawn. So they actually make several trips back to the Hudson River. Um, without the Hudson River, they definitely wouldn't have as many babies as they do. So now this is an interesting point to make. So the darter here, this is a very local fish. Sticks this around here. This is very here. local. Okay. Yes, you would find this on any normal day here in Nori Cove, okay. right out where they were saining. Meanwhile, the sturgeon, even though they spawn near here, they're going to be migrating back and forth. Correct. They right. migrate back and forth from the ocean to here. It's very interesting. It's an important thing to note too that uh, there's actually two species of sturgeon that live in the Hudson River. We've got the big giant Atlantic sturgeon, but we've got a smaller species, the short nosed sturgeon. It's actually an endangered, a federally endangered species in the United States of America. And uh, we're working very hard to study and, and eventually manage and bring back the populations of both the Atlantic and the short nosed sturgeon. They're both very, very important to us. So we brought up the fact that some fish are freshwater and some fish spend part of their life in freshwater and part of their life in saltwater. But since we're an estuary, we've got a whole range of habitats. And some fish we find here in the estuary aren't up here at Nori Point any of the time. These are fish that spend most of their time in saltwater. Anybody, uh, for example, PS212 from Queens is listening in right now. You guys live near New York Harbor, which is salty all of the time. So in addition to size diversity, we've also got a tremendous diversity of habitats and lifestyles in terms of the types of water fish can take. To tell us a little bit more about that, we're joined today by my good friend, Jean McAvoy. How's it going, Jean? Oh, just great, Chris. Show us what you got. It looks sure. a little weird. It is a little weird. Well, as Chris was saying, the Hudson River estuary is a very diverse place. It has everything from salty ocean water up to fresh, everything in between, deep water, shallow water. And because of all that diversity of habitat, it has great diversity of fish species. Over 200 kinds of fish can be found in the estuary. Now some like that Atlantic sturgeon use a lot of that territory at different times of their lives. They go from fresh to salt and back again. Here's a fish that does just the reverse. Oh, I love these guys. These cool little critters are American eels, and these tiny eels were born in the salty Sargasso Sea, a thousand miles away mm. off the coast mm. of Bermuda. Mm. 
Now they traveled all that way, took them more than a year, riding the currents of the Gulf Stream to get this far. Now, you know, by the way, um, scientists are worried that global climate change seems to be weakening the strength of the Gulf Stream. That would have dire consequences for fish sure. like these eels, also for global uh, climate patterns. Gotcha. We've got to do everything we can to reduce the effects of global climate change. All right. But any, anyway. So this is kind of a long skinny fish, but you've got the total opposite here next to you. What's going on with that guy? Well, this is um, a fish that oh my God. is just about my favorite. Mm. This funny little critter is called a box fish or a trunk fish. Oh, look at that. I, I associate them with warmer waters usually. Sure, sure. He needs full salt water. Uh -huh. And he was caught near New York City, 85 miles south of here, wrapped up in some uh, vegetation mm -hmm. when we did a seine down there. Gotcha. And his bony body just has small little openings for those tiny little fins and, and eyes and mouth. As you can see, he's not a speed demon. He can't move very fast, but the way he protects himself is by being able to produce a toxin when he, when he feels threatened, uh -oh. which could kill other fish. So we keep him very happy in our tank. Now, since we're on a kick about shapes here, I, 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 wanna, I, wanna, I wanna take a look at this. So here's a whole different body shape now. All right, now can you see that fish? I'm gonna help him out it's here a little bit. It's kind of buried look at this beautiful in the sediment. Animal. Oh my gosh. Talk about camouflage. Wow. He's very well camouflaged. Let's take him out for that a second. That is a winter flounder. Oh, he is just and Precious. he is now adapted Look to live animal. along the bottom. Oh, oh, gorgeous. Hidden in the sediment. But you know, the strange thing is, when he was born, he looked more like a regular fish. Sure. He had a, an eye on each side of his head, like a normal awesome. fish. And then one eye migrated around to the other side. That's incredible. Very bizarre. That's incredible. Gives me the creeps.